like linear acceleration, tangential acceleration is the change in the tangential velocity divided by a period of time. And we represent tangential acceleration as a sub t, a for acceleration, and t for tangential. The SI unit is meters per second squared, the same as for linear acceleration. If this car starts with a tangential velocity of zero kilometers per hour, and then it speeds up over time, then the car is experiencing tangential acceleration. It's important to remember that the term acceleration means a change in velocity, not necessarily an increase in velocity. If a car has a velocity of 100 kilometers per hour and it slows down, that's also considered acceleration because it's a change in velocity. In that example, the acceleration would be negative, but it's still considered acceleration, just like velocity can be positive or negative. Let's try calculating tangential acceleration. This car starts with zero velocity and then accelerates around the circle. Over 10 seconds, the car's velocity changes from 0 meters per second to 8 meters per second, about 29 kilometers per hour. The tangential acceleration would be the change in velocity, 8 minus 0 meters per second, over the period of time, 10 seconds. That gives us 8 meters per second divided by 10 seconds, which equals 0 0.8 meters per second per second. Remember, the unit meters per second per second is the same as meters per second squared. If someone says their car can do 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4 seconds, or maybe 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 4 seconds, they're describing the acceleration of their car. If the car is traveling in circular motion, then it would be the tangential acceleration of the car, which is the change in tangential velocity divided by a period of time. This tangential acceleration of a car driving around a circular track is not that different from a car on a straight road. The tangential acceleration is just the acceleration along the path that it's following. Finally, let's look at the two other kinematic equations for an object with a constant acceleration. These should look familiar. The first equation tells us that for an object in circular motion with a constant acceleration, the final position is equal to the initial position plus the initial tangential velocity times time plus one half times the tangential acceleration multiplied by the time squared. This is useful for things like finding the position of an object in circular motion after it accelerates for a given period of time. The second equation tells us that for an object accelerating in circular motion, the final tangential velocity squared is equal to the initial tangential velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the displacement, or the final minus the initial positions. That one can help us find things like the tangential velocity of an object in circular motion after accelerating over a given displacement. These should look familiar because they're the same kinematic equations from linear motion. All we're doing is changing the variables to represent the circular direction instead of the linear direction.